Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to my channel. Now I just wanted to do a quick little power test on this and we'll just see what we're getting for our buck but I'm just going to quickly show you the way I've got this connected up. So just at the moment because I don't have um, an adequate NTC which is basically uh, gives me a bit of a soft start. An NTC is a negative temperature coefficient um, resistor so basically when it's cold it has a high resistance and as it gets warmer as it's been used it has a low resistance down to pretty much zero and what this is for is to when you first especially on a circuit like this with a big old capacitor bank like this when you first apply the power this power bank is going to a load of power and the problem with it doing that is this thing is only good for two and a half amps um, and the power supply itself is only good for a few amps so you can really do some harm to your uh, turns on here and of course the turns on there because this thing will suck in quite a few amps at the start and it's only for you know a fraction of a second but it's that fraction of a second that does the damage and these things are what prevent that from happening just by slowing down the inrush current and um, making it all just a little bit easier on the on the system there so for now i'm using this because i can slowly wind it up as a soft start and it just means that uh, we don't put that stress on the system so over there as you can see source goes on um, and at the minute i think we've got um, uh, we got 170 uh, millivolts going in there. Now I'm just going to put this on to, uh, let's just say 600 uh, millivolt RMS, which as you can see, when we do that, it takes that signal out of the range of the scope, these graticules, so let's just get that a bit better out of the range of the scope, and it makes a horrible mark on the FFT. But if I am to just back that down a little tiny bit and make that a bit better, um, we can see that the FFT cleans right the way up and we're all good. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna see if we can get a little bit closer because this is actually applying the power to it and we'll see what's going on. So as you can see then, like I say, we've got this um, transformer coming in. Now, this is 160 VA but we've got to take into account things like power factors on these and the uh, power factor from zero to one on this type of load, it's inductive. It's not gonna be as good as if it was a non-inductive, fully resistive load. So because this doesn't transfer the energy from this part of the AC, the high voltage side to the low voltage side without costing. And to be honest with you, I don't think these are any more efficient than like 55%, something like that. Maybe somebody can tell me in the comments, but they're not very efficient. What they are is simple and clean. Unlike a switch mode power supply, which if you get a modern one, uh, you might be talking 94, 95% efficiency. If you get one 10 years ago, you're talking sort of in the high 80s efficiency, but you've got a lot of induced noise from those. And that's not what you want when you want um, a nice audio system but you know maybe maybe you're doing a lot of class d stuff is like that anyway so but that's a completely different thing so here we got our well first of all we've got a um, an x2 capacitor which goes across the main line coming in the dc uh, the ac sorry and um, that is in parallel with a uh, upright 35 amp uh, full bridge rectifier and this just makes sure that there's no like line noise coming through this X2 capacitor. And then we're straight into our capacitor bank. We've got about 15 millifarads a side here on the left and the right. It's sort of like pushing it to over kill slightly, but hey, why not? They were there. And here we've got our circuit. Um, I have actually screwed the uh, transistors now to the, the, the heatsink, which makes it look a lot neater rather than big ass clamps. From our output there, I've got a connection to the scope. I've tried to do it as close as I can to the circuit because um, that's what I've learned. That is the best way of doing it. And we've got a dummy load connecting up there. I've also got a jigsaw. So I was just trying to keep an eye on what was going on. On the output, 
but I don't really need that at the moment. The reason why I was doing that, let me just see what's going on over there. It pretty much tells you the same thing over here. 13 five to 13.2. Um, I don't know what that is going on downstairs. But there's the people have been doing a lot of work down there. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to turn this up and just see what we can actually get down here as our output. And then we can just do a quick little bit of math and we'll work out what, what power's coming out of this before we see it clipping off uh, tops and bottoms. So let me just turn this up a little bit. So I'm going up to 700 uh, millivolt RMS going in. That's 800. That's 900. Uh, that's uh, one volt going in RMS. So I'm going to just move it down the scale now because we don't want to turn that too much higher because I think we're going to start clipping any second. Now there we go. Start seeing that just chopping off bottom and top. You can see how messy the FFT has gone. So let's just back that down. Back that down, back that down. There we go, that's cleaned up on the FFT. And if we just look across there, we can see basically we've got 22.55 volts. And over here, just zoom into that, it says we've got 23.05 volts. So we'll work with what we see on the screen. And uh, let's then do some quick calculations. And I'm just gonna turn that down while we're doing that, just cause we don't want to be overstressing everything. It's going to look a bit messy on the FFT because we're not actually putting enough signal on there. That's why you can see the uh, sinusoidal waves on a very small one. That's just not enough for it to do with doing its calculations. We're actually down to about two and a half volts now. So rather than playing around with anything too much, let's just go over here and let's just do our quick calculations. What do we have? We have. Um, 23 or 22, 2255 was, let's just do it like that. Uh, so we're gonna put 22.55, we're gonna square that, and then we're gonna divide that by the eight ohm load. And we should now have our output power in watts. So we got there, it says 63.5, 63.56 watts. So let's just say you know, 60 watts, a little bit over 60 watts which is exactly what this amplifier is supposed to give us at eight ohms. That's quite nice. Can't really say that's too, uh, too bad at all. All right, well, from there then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of a change in setup. And what I mean by that is rather than, let me just get this thing sorted, rather than um, have the oscilloscope on and the waveform generator over there, I've got a new bit of kit that I wanna play with and I wanna show you and we'll see what that says. I'll be back in a moment. I got a new piece of software. Now, I'm using Linux and you can't actually use this new software in Linux. I'll put a virtual machine in and I'm using it within the virtual machine. So let's just make that a full page. And I'm gonna tell you now what this is. Um, this is my new bit of kit for the bench. This is basically, I bought it for audio. It does have a whole bunch of other capabilities, but I've bought it to get around some of the issues that we got when we're trying to use the FFT and audio measurements on an 8-bit oscilloscope. And that's basically to say on an 8-bit oscilloscope, it's, you can do it, but you know, you need more bandwidth. You need more uh, bits. And this thing here is a 14-bit USB uh, oscilloscope. Now, it comes with, or you can get free with it from uh, Digilent, a, some software called Waveform. And this is uh, the Waveforms here, but I don't use Waveforms. I use Waveforms in order to calibrate this thing, because it's got a bit of a calibration process that you gotta go through. But I don't use that. I'm using a piece of software from a, a chap, uh, Jake, his name is, and his, this piece of software is by The Stuff Made. Now The Stuff Made is a YouTube channel. I'd say if you're into your audio, you want to look at this sort of software and that, go there. He's a great fella. I had a couple of questions. He answered straight away for me, which is really, really brilliant. And it's allowed me to progress uh, with this. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, I've just got on the spectrum analyzer part here, and I just wanna say straight away that, look, you can see where the noise floor is down there, down 100. 
Um, and the highest peak that I've got on this is a minus 72, uh, minus 73.2 dB. Now, we're gonna do a couple of little quick measurements on this. The actual uh, amplifier is on. It's all, all go there with the, the connector block down and the amps on there. You can see the little green LED slightly illuminated. Power supply, of course, we need that. And what we're going to do is, because this isn't going to look very good, so we're going to use the screenshots of this I'm recording. Um, in Linux, I'm recording the actual screen of this. And I hope it does work out to, you know, to give me the actual screen and not just inside Linux. Hey, it's all a big learning curve and we're going to find out together. So we're going to go for this, um, first of all, THD in noise versus frequency. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the level to one watt. And in actual fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the level to five watts. Yeah, we're at eight ohms. And this is just the range for the top. That's um, plus ten percent distortion. We don't. We, we're not going to need that. I don't believe. But the, the highest it goes is one percent there. So we'll, we'll have to put it at ten percent. And the bottom is 0 0.1. We can have uh, another order of magnitude and then again but i don't think we're going to actually be uh, needing that particularly here we're going to go for the uh, thd of the distortion side of things and i've given it a bandwidth of 30 hertz and i'll tell you what that will be in a minute uh average is one i'm just going to put the average to two and we're going to go in 50 steps on this and please forgive the banging it's probably the nicest it's been for the last three days but the uh, downstairs is having some work done in the bathroom. A new bathroom, a new walk-in bathroom. Very nice. So, let's... Uh, this was a measurement I took uh, a little bit earlier when I first just started the amp up. But I've made a few differences. Like I've switched from times 10 on my probe to times 1. So let's run this. It's going to take a few moments just to get it going. Especially at the lower frequencies. And then we'll see the start coming across the screen. So here we are. This is at a 26 hertz. Now where you can see the marker. And we're at like 0.08%. Which isn't terribly great. 0.06. I see that little dip. And, and this remember is at a 5 watts of power going through this and I can see over on the I'll just show you quick what's going on over here you get to see what's going over what's going on over there as that runs through that is the AC voltage on the output let me just see if I can make that a bit more a bit more seeable Okay, well that's that completed. So that's the that's the noise as well as the um, total harmonic distortion. So let's just put it down to being the total harmonic distortion on this one without the noise. And again, we're going to run it at five watts. I'm just going to let that start doing its thing. At the lower frequencies, it does take a little bit longer. To, um, to process it. Okay, so we started off down there, we're at 30 hertz now at 0 0.05360%. 0.04, it's quite nice. As we go to 70 hertz. I do like the idea that on the bottom left you've got this spectrum analyzer. And uh, you get your scope, of course, on the right-hand side. I do like that. But the spectrum analyzer at the moment is, uh, most things are there, sort of like around about 70, minus 70, any, anything else you can see in that. Now there's gonna be things, there's gonna be things from this entire setup that you're gonna see in there. You, you're not gonna get, you know, I suppose, unless you're spending a lot of money. 
pure type of thing going on there. So it sort of cuts us off around about 17, um, 17 uh, kilohertz there. So, but that's quite nice. You get to look down it, we get to go all the way back to the start and have a little look what was going on there at uh, 20 hertz, 0.06991%. And go a bit further in, what we've got here, 25 hertz, 0.58. And of course, we also get to see down here. So if we go for that, because that's our, um, where are we there? That's at, uh, at 80, 80 hertz. But even that's minus 66.6, 6, more than six is a eh? six, six, six. <laughs> um, got 69. When we look at these peaks, they're, uh, that's minus 78. Nearly minus 79 there. So it's good. It is a. And it's all below the 0.1% line. Which is which is pretty good. Pretty good. Now we can look at uh, THD versus power. I think that has to go up to 100 watts now. So what I'm going to do. I've set it for. Um, I'm going to put it onto 1% distortion. Where I want it to cut off. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to push this too high, and I'm not even sure if I can without breaking this device. This is going to be the first time um, I'm going to push it if I can to 100 watts. Make sure our load impedance is eight ohms, which it is. I'm just going to do a quick temperature check. That's well on the dummy load. There's nothing. There's some warmth on the heat sink to the amplifier, but the dummy load is actually cold. So. We're going to give that a go then, um, and we are going to be doing uh, stopping at one percent. Bandwidth is going to be uh, twenty hertz. We're going to be going from uh, steps fifty. Yeah, can we go? We we'll start from one watt. All right, just bring it straight in at one watt. Now I haven't done this before, so this is going to be. Well, oh, this is going to be whatever it's going to be. Let's give it a go. Let's just start running that. <clears throat> okay, as you can see, the power is rising. Uh, we're still under like one percent, uh, under zero point one percent, I should say. And we are at, let's say, we're at ten watts now. Zero point zero six on the uh, THD. And noise, this is noise as well. And we're at 40 watts. Whoa, not quite 1%, 63 watts. Okay, but this is only good for that amount of power. Uh, because in the measurement I showed you before, we did what was it, 22.5 volts or something? Or was it 23 volts? Oh, I can't remember, I'm sorry. But we're good for 63 watts. So that tallies up quite nicely with that. And then we got into being at 1.064% distortion, which is its cutout because it had gone above. Now let's say we get that under 60, we're still 0.8. And down here, we get to be 0.7, so that's at 50 watts. But the jump is above, above 40 watts, we start going up. We're not quite on 1% um, distortion yet, but below that, we're below up to 40 watts, we've got a distortion of 0.055%, and that's at 40 watts. Now that's pretty good. I mean, I don't think I'd uh, be getting it to do any more work than that anyway, to be honest with you, in this small room. That's fun. I am thrilled. Absolutely thrilled. One, I'm thrilled with the software. Two, I'm thrilled with this because this is going to open up new doors in playing around with employers and testing them. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with this uh, particular circuit anyway. It's, uh, it's still below 1% distortion all the way up till we get past where I know it clips anyway. And that's what we're seeing. That's what it would have been seen straight away. And I've just, you know, this thing's got a built-in cutoff. I set it at 1% distortion, THD. Um, and that's exactly what it's done. It's cut off there beautiful so I can't damage anything. I am thrilled. 
So look guys, uh, are we going to do one more test actually? We're going to do a frequency response. Uh, and we're going to do that at round about, let's say we're going to do it at uh, one, one volt RMS, a frequency response, right? So we're going to go in from a range of 10 to 50,000 hertz. So I know it's high, but it doesn't really need that. Um, but we're going to do that across there anyway. And we should probably change that to 30. Let's change that down to 30. And this is just our range top to bottom on the DB. And we're channel one and let's run it. Let's run our frequency response to see what it's like at one volt across the frequency. Okay, what we don't want to see is deviation. It doesn't really matter what the numbers do. Uh, we just don't want to see it deviating all over the place. We want to see it going to a pretty much level area and then stay in there all the way to the end. And if we get that, I'm going to jump around the room. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I could hear some weird noises coming out the... Uh, that uh, thing, but uh, yeah, so well, we stayed within a decent parameter there. Uh, what we got there, we got a 0 0.69 dBr at 27 uh, dB, which is wow, that's uh, pretty much as high as we can run this thing actually. 27 dB that would equivalent to what it said it was on the gain, and that's at 18 hertz. Mm. And we started off down here at uh, minus 0.41. But remember that we were running that at um, a, a reasonable rate in knots. So that's one one watt of power, uh, one volt of power. All right. Let me just do this just one more time, and this time we're going to have a little look over here and see what happens on there. Look at the voltage line. All right. That's just as it got going with the higher with the lower frequency it was like the higher voltage and let's just run that that's peaking remember 22 volts 22.5 volts is what i could get out of it so this is absolutely peaking at that one watt vrms oh it wasn't happy there was it and you could actually hear that i think all right so we're not going to push that any harder on there and uh, the result is pretty much the same anyway we've still uh, stayed within that area, which is less than a dB of, uh, of change. So that's all good. And our spectrum analyzer, if we just put that on for a level, this is um, at uh, just under a volt. We should probably go to something that's a lot kinder to it. Let me just feel the temperature. The temperature there. Heat out, oh, the dummy load, that's very, very hot. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna call that quits for now. We can look back at this and do some other in-depth stuff if I think there's anything really worth po pointing out. Um, but just for now, I'm gonna say, let's just do a quick single shot. Ba -bum. And we get to have a little look. This is a 70 dB down here. And we are measuring over there, minus 73.5 dB at two hertz. This is our fundamental that we're putting in at uh, 0.2 VRMS at one kilohertz. Okay. Well guys, have you got this far? I hope this uh, has been interesting to you and this is uh, hopefully just a start for me playing with this audio stuff and um, thank you very much to Jake out there and the Stuff Made. That's a big thank you because without this software this wouldn't have been possible. And, um, yeah, I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.